Why do I feel like I haven't been in front of a camera in so long? <laughs> I miss talking in my videos. I actually haven't filmed in front of a camera like this in probably, I wanna say like a month now. My hair is herring. Let's talk. Woo! <laughs> Hello my friends, it's Nina and here's the truth about making a webtoon. That sounds so dramatic. I have not posted a webtoon episode in 10 months and here's why. So as you saw by the title of this video, I am going to be talking about my webtoon and webtoon making and just life in general. So get a cup of your favorite liquid that was worded very strangely. Get a refreshment and let's talk, let's chat. This video is going to be sort of an update about my life, about what I've been up to and just how things have been for the past year because I feel like even though I have a YouTube channel, even though I'm pretty active on social media, maybe more on Instagram and other platforms besides YouTube, sorry. Even though I am a person on social media, I feel like I don't talk much about myself, at least as much as I thought I did. A lot of you may know me as a YouTuber, a vlogger, I think that is my bread and butter. Most of my channel is comprised of vlogs. I would say like 80% of my channel is vlogs. But you might also know that I do have a webtoon as well. I have had my own self-published webtoon since 2021. It is 2024 now, so it's been almost four... Nope, I can't do math. It has been almost three years that I've had this webtoon. So my webtoon is called To Love and Be Loved. It is a romance drama webtoon. And I launched my webtoon back in August 2021. It's been actually almost almost three years now, the anniversary is coming up next month. <gasps> and I would say that my webtoon is also a big part of my life as well, but I always forget that it is. I feel like I always kind of forget that I have my webtoon, at least lately. And so that's something I kind of wanted to talk about in this video. This video is not scripted at all. I didn't write down any points. It's basically just going to be all of my thoughts released. So as the title says, here is my truth about making a webtoon and kind of my explanation as to why I haven't posted an episode of my webtoon in the past 10 months. So as you guys might no, I am a full-time content creator. That is my job. That is where I get my income and I am very, very blessed to have this as my job. I can confidently say that I have been a full-time content creator since 2019. But when it comes to making my webtoon, I've always considered myself a rookie, a part-time webtoon creator. It was always just like a side thing. It was never something that I took too seriously. But the thing is, webtoon making itself is a career for a lot of people. It's their bread and butter. And so it's kind of just always been this strange thing for me to deal with. It was so easy for me to say I was a content creator because that's what I am, right? I've been doing YouTube for officially, I would say seven years now. But when it comes to the webtoon, even though I've had it for three years now, I still consider myself a rookie. I still don't consider it my career. But the main reason why I didn't post an episode for the last 10 months was there's actually a lot of reasons but basically it wasn't planned i did not take a break on purpose there was no cliffhanger on the last episode i mean there was but like the next episode after that i published my last episode in september 2023 and the next episode was supposed to come two weeks after that <laughs> The <laughs> I didn't plan for a hiatus or anything. Just things came up in my life and in my health that kind of just postponed me being able to publish the next episode. If I'm going to break it down, the biggest reason that I took a break from webtoon making, even though I have continued to make webtoon related content on my YouTube channel, I do make webtoon vlogs, I make webtoon making videos, the behind the scenes, the process, I've done some tutorials here and there too, which I'm very proud of. I've one of my goals with the webtoon was to also show the kind of behind the scenes of it and just show what it's like to make the webtoon because I know that people would be curious about it. And so that's what I have done since the release of my webtoon in 2021. But for the past 10 months, I didn't post an actual episode. So I would get comments being like, oh, where's the next episode? Like, are things okay? What's happening? But basically the biggest reason why I took an actual physical break was because of health reasons. So... This is also why it's also kind of just been hard for me to ever talk about why I took a break. It's because I'm the kind of person where I will help other people if they're going through something. Like if my friends are going through something, family's going through something, if my viewers are going through something, I am ready to give advice, I'm ready to help. But when it came to me, <laughs> Whenever it came to me, if something happened to me, I would deal with it in silence. Like if there was something going on with my health, if I was dealing with something, I always 
kind of struggled to let other people know I didn't want it to become someone else's problem and so that's my kind of bad habit is I just don't talk about what's going on in my life until I understand what's happening and then I can tell other people <laughs> I am working on it, but what happened to me is it hasn't even begun since 2023 It actually began since 2022. I think when it really became an issue was early 2023 or at the beginning of the year of 2023. I was dealing with arm issues and it's kind of crazy to talk about now because i am not dealing with the same issues that i dealt with back then but at the time i was dealing with arm issues in my right arm i experienced numbness for pretty much a year and a lot of artists know this as well right around here when you're making art especially like digital art or just like making art for a really long time it's a lot of repetitive movement and so i would be drawing for 10 plus hours a day and that's not even a lot especially for my pace i am basically a part-time webtoon creator and so it wasn't like this thing that i was doing every single day but for many periods of time i would spend 10 plus hours a day drawing doing nothing else because I also didn't know how to give myself a break I didn't know how to do anything else besides just sit at my desk and draw and get these episodes up it was a lot of repetitive movement it was a lot of strain on my arm and this was just like grinding on my desk and it got to the point especially because I had been working on my webtoon since like 2020 it was just like basically months and years of doing the same movement that my arm finally gave out and I experienced constant numbness in these two fingers so like right around here on and off there was just numbness and i'm thankful now that i am at a point where i don't really remember how serious it was but i remember it was so serious that i felt like i damaged my body and it was a scary feeling it was not something that i expected but i realized it was a common thing i just felt a little disappointed in myself that my body was giving out on me kind of thing and so this was always something that i had to kind of deal with on my own and it was not easy to deal with it wasn't easy to tell my parents either that like hey yeah so i'm dealing with some arm numbness <laughs> And I don't know how to deal with it. Did I do something bad to myself? So that was my biggest concern was that while I was working, I was also dealing with this constant numbness and I felt like I did this to myself. It was a lot of self-blame. There was some anger, frustration with myself. And I began to question a lot whether it was all worth it. And... Ugh. Another issue with this was that with content creation as well, it's a very sedentary job. You're sitting at your desk and editing, filming, typing away, blah, blah, blah. It's a very just like you're sitting down and working a lot. And so when I experienced this numbness, on top of that, I also had to edit my videos. I had to do a lot of that kind of work as well. So I just started to question everything about my life. I was like, Am I not going to be able to do anything that I want to do? And so early 2023 to basically that entire year, it was a lot of inner turmoil because I didn't want any of this to be anyone else's problem because in the grand scheme of things as well, I would keep telling myself too, it's not that big of a deal. A lot of people have it worse. I should be thankful that I have a career that I love and I should be thankful that I have a passion project that I also really love. So it's like, even though I was dealing with this physical difficulty I also would tell myself it's not that big of a deal and I shouldn't make it that big of a deal kind of thing just like a lot of a lot of conflicting thoughts I for the past year or that past year was trying so hard to figure it out on my own without making such a big deal out of it and hopefully just things would get better but because I was dealing with it on my own and because I wasn't telling other people about it and at the same time I felt like I also didn't have anyone to tell a lot of time slipped by and I was basically afraid of posting another episode I was afraid of making my arm worse I was afraid of just my physical mental health getting worse because of the anxieties that came about having a literal physical thing that was happening to me i also had to put my focus into something that was putting food on the table that was going to help me sustain myself and so another point that i wanted to touch on with making a webtoon is that it doesn't Ooh. i should talk about it i think a lot of people might know this but webtoons don't bring you money or at least a lot of it unless you're like a professional 
professional webtoon creator. Like you have a contract with someone, you have some sort of agreement, you have a salary, then yes, you can make money with a webtoon. But if you're a self-publishing webtoon creator, such as myself, where I'm publishing on webtoon canvas, a self-publishing platform, all you have is ad revenue and that barely brings you anything. Especially for beginner creators or smaller creators. Even with my platform, I'm blessed that I did have a large audience that was tuning into my webtoon and that's mostly because of at the time it was my social media I told you guys about my webtoon and a lot of you guys saw the webtoon followed it subscribed to it read it And so I already was lucky where I had an audience that was interested in this webtoon and eventually of course I did find that people were finding the webtoon without knowing who I was on YouTube, which was such a cool thing. There were people that were reading my webtoon that didn't know about Ono Nina or about my YouTube, anything like that, which was one of my goals. I wanted people to find the webtoon just because of the webtoon itself. So I got a mix of both, but even with my audience, that ad sharing, ad revenue, I could buy a pair of socks with what I got. Uh. And so that's another thing that I struggled with as well was I was making content about making a webtoon and something that I unintentionally did was inspire a lot of people to create a webtoon which I didn't really realize was going to happen but I kind of should have also expected because now I started to kind of understand the term influencer I consider myself a content creator I don't really consider myself to be someone that influences other people I have an influence on people and that's something thing that I realized later on. So when I was sharing my webtoon vlogs and showing the behind the scenes of webtoon making blah blah blah, I did it with the intent of showing what the process was like because I thought it was going to be interesting to someone. But something that I didn't realize that would come with that was people being inspired to make webtoons themselves, which I think is very cool. But I also was like, wait, should I be influencing people to make webtoons when it's kind of a complicated and difficult industry? And so that's why I also sort of kind Kind of pulled back a little bit with the webtoon as well. It was like I didn't know if I really wanted to inspire and influence people to go into a career that was not giving me a sustainable lifestyle. And so the truth is that you barely make money, especially if you're beginning. Unless you really, really think about the business aspect of your webtoon, of what you're creating. Something else I want to mention is that my experience is not every webtoon creator's experience. This is my own experience, but there might be some people who resonate with what I say. There might be people who have different experiences. Maybe things are better for them, but this is my experience. I just want to clarify that. But in the beginning when I was making my webtoon back in 2021, back then there was a sort of creator program and so if you were like the top creators of that month or something you're put into this program where you do earn a certain amount of money every month as long as you pass some sort of threshold and so that was kind of giving me at least something it still wasn't enough for me to sustain my life but it was still a little bit of money so if I'm going to be transparent that program gave me a hundred dollars a month for me publishing my webtoon episodes. And that's definitely not enough for the amount of hours that you're putting in. Definitely not enough. And so even if it was something, I was like, huh? <laughs> What? When you're putting in 10 plus hours a day drawing, doing nothing else, basically putting your health at risk, and then you get paid that much, it didn't add up. That happened for a few months, and then all of a sudden, I remember they took down the creator program. I think they just like ended it, and so there was nothing else anymore. There was no creator program. All you had was your own ad sharing revenue, which itself was not sustainable at all. Still to this day, I don't even think about the ad sharing program. But again, luckily for me, I had YouTube. I had my social media career. And because of the webtoon itself, I was also lucky enough to have brand deals with brands and companies that I loved myself. I got to work with a lot of companies that were related to webtoon making itself. And that was definitely because of my full-time content creating job. And so because of that, I was able to work on the webtoon, which is basically my passion project. But this this is a lot of people's livelihood. Webtoon creating, being a webtoon creator, that's their job for a lot of people. So I was like, what is going on? Why aren't creators getting paid more? And this is something that I can touch on in the future, but it's just something that I did want to mention is that yes, you don't make 
I'm holding myself back a lot right now, <laughs> but I don't depend on my webtoon for income But at the same time because I love my webtoon so much because it is my baby <laughs> And because it is something that I think about pretty much like 70% of the time I also knew that part of me didn't want to let go of this webtoon I didn't want to give up on it and so again just like so many conflicting thoughts I was like should I work on this and then another part of me was like I need to work on this because I love it so much and so I was dealing with those thoughts non-stop for a year year and it was really hard to navigate another thing that i want to talk about is that just personally i didn't have anyone to go to for advice like when it comes to content creation when it comes to vlogging let's say for example i have a lot of friends who also vlog and so we can relate to each other we can talk about things we can talk about our experiences and relate to each other but when it comes to webtoon making when it comes to making content about the webtoon i found that there was no one that i could really talk to because I didn't know anyone that could help me kind of navigate what I was doing There are a lot of webtoon creators, there are a lot of people making content about digital art, that kind of stuff But doing both at the same time, it was kind of like I didn't know who to turn to So again, I was dealing with this internally by myself I was like trying to give myself advice when I was also struggling to deal with what was happening And so basically the past year was a lot of inner struggling and debating with myself, motivating myself, but also tearing myself down a lot and when you're in that state where you're just like fighting with yourself a lot things don't get done and so i found that 10 months passed and there hasn't been a new webtoon episode in a long time Oh, but I did want to touch on the fact that you can make money with your webtoon because the thing is I do get a lot of comments where it's like just like people ask a lot How much do you earn from making the webtoon? Is this a good livelihood? Is this something that I should get into? If I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't advise people to be a webtoon creator as a webtoon creator myself unless you really really love making a webtoon and you can deal with the first few years of not making income from it like me then i would say go for it because that is what you want to do but if you're trying to get into creating a webtoon just for the money no do not do it do not but again for me this is a passion project this is something that i really wanted to do and so that's why i'm able to do it and i still have a job that can sustain me while i work on this passion project and i do have plans for the webtoon that hopefully should make the webtoon be profitable in the future because you know we do live in a capitalistic society but just personally you don't make a significant amount unless and i will say this is what a lot of creators and artists do as well unless you make your own merch unless you have a like patreon unless you have other platforms that can help you bring in some sort of revenue some sort of income the webtoon itself might not be a profitable thing in the beginning but a lot of artists and a lot of creators they have patreons they have businesses selling their art their merchandise etc etc they have other things on the side next to their webtoon that helps them bring in the money and resources for them to be able to sustain themselves to keep creating their webtoon but yes you can make money for your webtoon. You just have to look for it. You just have to look for the other opportunities. You have to look for what else you can do. But the ad revenue itself, but I think this is sort of a thing that is talked about a lot in the webtoon making community. Again, I barely feel like I'm part of it. But I have seen people talk about the difficult part about making a webtoon And I have seen people talk about how they're not getting paid for the amount of work that they're doing And that's another thing that I've struggled with a lot as well is just like making art or having a job in the creative field It's always had its negative views People usually are inclined to say, oh don't work in the creative whatever, do this instead I kind of already knew that this was going to be something that was difficult to get an income from but I wanted to make the webtoon so bad that I didn't think about that but it started to become a more real thing when I realized how much time is needed to make a webtoon and that's another truth about making webtoons is that it's very very time consuming for me I started the webtoon when the pandemic happened I started the webtoon like creating it in 2020 when we had lockdown when I was literally at home all the time I wasn't going anywhere I wasn't traveling I wasn't you know going out and about 
I had so much time at home that I was like, I need to do something besides play Animal Crossing. And so that's why back then I decided to make the webtoon. I had so much time. I wanted to get back into drawing. I wanted to be creative again. And I just wanted this outlet for all the ideas that I had in my head, all the stories that I had in my head. And so that's why I worked on the webtoon. But again, at that time, I was so in the present that I didn't realize things would change in the future. I didn't realize that I would have a life again. I'm very thankful that I'm always out and about now. But because of that, I have no time to sit and work on this webtoon. I have to do so many other things. That's something you should also prepare for is that if you do want to make a webtoon, expect a lot of time to go into it. A lot of time and effort. Every webtoon episode has at least let's say like 20 panels. So a panel is an image. I think if you're an originals creator on Webtoon's platform, I've heard that you're required to make 40 panels per episode per week, which by the way, what? What? That's a lot of panels. But basically think of it as 40 pieces of artwork per week. You're making 40 works per week. That's redonkulous. For me, at least I get to have maybe two plus weeks to work on each episode because I'm not on a strict schedule. I don't have a partnership or agreement or a contract with anyone when it comes to the webtoon. I am self-publishing. I put in whatever amount of panels I want. I take as much time as I need. Freaking, I took 10 months. I try to give myself maybe, if I want more pressure on myself, two weeks per episode. And even then, that's still a lot of time that you're putting into making each episode. And so maybe what I'm begging for, if you are a webtoon reader yourself, if you consume webtoons, please send the authors and creators that you're reading webtoons from a lot of love, a lot of support, because they are not being compensated as much as they deserve. They deserve a lot more. I think I deserve a lot more too. <laughs> Be patient with your creators that you support and try to understand it's a little bit difficult. I also understand when creators that I follow also take breaks. I'm like, yes, please take a break. <laughs> Basically, too long didn't read. After the struggles that I was personally dealing with, I still don't want to give up on it. And mama didn't raise a quitter. I unfortunately don't quit. <laughs> Maybe that's a fortunate thing, but I don't plan on giving up on this webtoon. I don't want to, I don't plan to, and I won't. But something that I was trying to deal with and figure out for, I would say, the past year is how to approach making the webtoon in a healthier way. I have been recovering, obviously. My arm is better. I rarely, if ever, experience numbness now. That's because I definitely give myself a lot more breaks. I'm working on my webtoon with a better method. I'm not grinding my elbow against hard surfaces, but at the same time, I'm also trying to incorporate a better work-life balance. And that's something that I advise for anyone. You need to have a work-life balance because you should not be risking your health, risking your well-being for your job, but you should also do well with your job as well. And so lately I have been trying to have a better work-life balance. Something that I definitely was not doing was giving myself better balance. 10 plus hours of work, make sure you incorporate breaks in that time. Stretch, go for a walk, drink water, do things that are good for your health, and then get back to it. Or else your body will give up on you. Sorry to say, you are not infinite. You are not indestructible. Everyone has a limit. Even if you don't think you have a limit, your body will know better than your brain will. But I did want to explain what has been going on because I do not want to keep you guys not knowing how things have been. I also don't want to put up this like image that I'm indestructible or that it's bad to say when things are bad. You have to acknowledge that you're going through something in order for you to figure out what to do after that. Eldest daughter of an immigrant household things. I just don't like making my problems other people's problems. So hopefully I covered everything that I wanted to say in this video. There are definitely more truths to making a webtoon, but I feel like there's truths to anything. There will be much more things that I want to touch on and you might have more questions about the webtoon making process itself. So let me know if you have more questions. Basically, <laughs> to summarize, you don't make money. I'm kidding. You do make some money. You just have to be you just have to be creative and find other outlets to make this a profitable and sustainable thing for yourself. Please send your creators that you follow and support a lot of love because you would be surprised how much your support can help them keep 
working on the thing that they're creating. Not saying this for me, but I do appreciate any support. I do appreciate people reading. I do appreciate people commenting, blah, blah, blah. But as someone that follows creators myself, all I want for other creators is also for them to be treated the way that they deserve. People don't take this industry seriously. Even though entertainment is the biggest, one of the biggest industries, it's also something that is so important to humans is entertainment. It's been part of our culture since the beginning of time. Since the beginning of humans existing. Entertainment, media, it's been such a big part of our lives, but we don't take it seriously enough. It's like, if you're expecting content to be created, you better be paying people better. Oh, my battery's dying. Okay, battery's in. Anyway, companies and people in power, especially in these industries, please do a little bit better. Pay your employees. They are putting lots of hours and lots of energy and effort into trying to create things that will make people entertained and happy. I am hoping that for for not just webtoon creators, but for artists, for anyone that's working in creative fields. I am hoping that people can just take it more seriously and realize that the people creating these things are humans. They are not robots. They are people with livelihoods. They are people that need to sustain themselves, their families. There needs to be more work done to support creators, support people who pursue these industries. Creative industries definitely need a lot more change. And personally for me, I will also work harder to bring more episodes out. I am very, very, very grateful and thankful. I feel like grateful and thankful are the same word. I'll say both anyway. I'm very grateful for anyone who has supported the webtoon and for anyone who's still supporting the webtoon even though it's been such a long time. Thank you so much for allowing me to work on my passion project. I hope that I can keep working on it. I know that I will but I want to work harder on it. I do also know that I have basically a lot of privilege that I can rest as much as I want to. I think I am definitely in a better place and I just want to create more episodes. So let's make some more episodes. And that all being said, there actually is a new episode. I finally finished the next episode of my webtoon and I am already planning for the next one. More episodes will come. I can't promise that it'll be done in two weeks because it is actually a busy time for me right now. But I definitely know it will not take another 10 months for the next episode. Thank you so much for reading my silly little webtoon. Thank you for all your support, your patience, not just with the webtoon itself, but also content. Content wise, a lot of is coming. I did recently go to Korea which was a very healing time and I did vlog a lot so a lot of content will come and a lot of webtoon related content will come just I am itching so hard to release content so that will come out. If there's anything else you're curious about when it comes to webtoon making leave your questions in the comments. This is definitely not all of the truths about making a webtoon. There's definitely more interesting things about it. I am not the know-all be-all of webtoons. I still consider myself a rookie. I'm not not a professional. I am just someone that has this fictional piece of work. But that is going to be it for this video. I hope it was eye-opening a little bit. I hope you learned something from it. I also hope it wasn't discouraging. I do love being a webtoon creator. I do know that there are a lot of successful people with webtoons as well, but I do not want to sugarcoat it. I don't want to romanticize it when it is also a difficult industry. Not just webtoon making, but comics, publishing, animation, etc, etc. It's known to have its hardships as well. But that is for another time. But again, a new episode of my webtoon is out for you to read. If you haven't read my webtoon yet, you can read the entire thing. I will leave links down below. Thank you so much for your support, your patience, everything. I am very, very grateful and appreciative of you. I will continue the webtoon. No worries about that. This is not a declaration of me saying, I'm not working on this anymore. Uh-uh. More episodes of the webtoon are coming. More YouTube videos are coming. More content is coming. That is going to be it for this video and we're going to end it with a hug as always. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye, my friends.